anyway, welcome Vinod and Sang. So let's hope. Uh, so basically, I think we have already had a session on the cloud uh, previously, but maybe we can take, uh, take it forward. So, you know, I was thinking like uh, in the olden days, you had this old economy companies, then you had the term digital native. But here, I think going forward, we are going to be a cloud native. Uh, whether you're a small company or a large company, you have to be on the cloud. So from now on, we are going to be a cloud native. Uh, most of the companies will be cloud native. So how will that affect the work culture, one? And the second is the economy. So maybe you can maybe answer that in a general way and maybe your companies, your personal experiences also you can talk about. Hello. See, I think uh, uh, interestingly cloud native is uh, is a little bit uh, different than just being on cloud, right? I mean, cloud native is basically uh, integrating all the set of tools, Plus APIs, like born in the cloud. services, it's everything which is there on the cloud. Right. And, uh, and what it does is it just brings a lot of value towards uh, uh, a faster deployment of all the, um, of for the business, any feature that you want to deploy, it's, it's already there. And uh, so that, uh, uh, you know, the integration becomes a lot more easier, et cetera, right? So if we just think about that, what changes would it uh, uh, bring to the culture? I think from a cloud native perspective, we can think uh, that more and more, uh, you know, one needs to have uh, some kind of a speciality in being a solution provider, right? Where you know what kind of cloud native APIs can be used, what are the solution providers which are uh, which are already there, and which can be easily, seamlessly be integrated onto the platform, right? So, uh, from that perspective, I think the development community, the developers themselves, they have to be much more aware than what they were, uh, you know, uh, uh, earlier. So, uh, so that's one. I mean, security is definitely one another area, which I'm sure that we'll talk about later. Sure. But that's one another area which uh, which needs a lot of uh, you know. Uh, education, I would say. And uh, in cloud itself, you know, there are so many, uh, uh, being cloud native, there are so many layers, at least two or three major layers that have come in. And every layer needs expertise within the company. So for example, if we just talk about work orchestration, which is one key area in the cloud, right, whether it is Kubernetes or, right. or uh, you know, uh, any other such kind of a container orchestration platform. Uh, uh, that that's one area which is a totally, uh, I would say, a niche speciality which is needed within the company, and then you need to understand that. Yeah. Then you come to the container, right, which is Docker's of the world, and then then you come into the application side where you have to think about how you would be deploying in container. So you know the entire uh, when you say about work culture, the development, the testing, and even the deployment culture uh, will need to adapt you know, towards it. Um, I mean, we are still in a very, I would say, a hybrid cloud world. Uh, or maybe, I, I wouldn't generalize it. I mean, at least, uh, you know, in our company, we are kind of in a hybrid world. And uh, slowly, companies are moving. Uh, still, there is a lot of discussion around OPEX, CAPEX. The traditional companies are still wary about, uh, you know, being uh, totally on cloud. Uh, so being cloud native means thinking about being cloud uh, you know, that's the first cloud strategy. You have to think about that if everything was on cloud, how would it run? So, so that mentality also needs to change. And, uh, you know, for the economy as a whole, yes, I think it will be great. I mean, we are uh, projected to be a $5 trillion economy. There are so many SMBs who are going to come in. Uh, you know, I think it's projected uh, maybe around, what, 1 billion uh, maybe internet users or 700 or 800 million so internet users. So all these uh, demand that is going to come, uh, cloud native is the perfect way to, uh, you know, move uh, forward. So, you know, you can add to that. So, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. <clears throat> See, I think let's, uh, I'll probably step back a little bit. Sure. And look at the cloud journeys which the enterprises are going through right now. Right. And uh, if I had to look at the across industries, I think it is a journey which everybody has embarked on. As the technology is maturing, the enterprises are also getting more matured and trying to make most of the value from the cloud. So that's, that's the context, back, you know, backdrop. Uh, but more important is that, is cloud just a place for storage? Is cloud just a place for compute? 
is cloud, what is, what is the objective? Right. I think very important to understand as an enterprise, where do you want to use the cloud? Because when you talk of cloud, people talk of only the storage. No one thinks of compute. So, there is one aspect of it. But more importantly, if you go now one step further, that how do you use cloud as your differentiator, as your competitive strategy, as your new revenue streams? I think there is where you need to really build the business case around cloud. So cloud is lot more than cost optimization, is lot more than storage, lot more than, uh, you know, it's, it is the integral part of your business operating model. I think right. that is one context I really want to set it up. And it is not going to go away. Uh, there will be versions, variants of cloud, like uh, we'll talk about, a lot of businesses may not want that data to be transported back to a centralized cloud architecture. Right. Because we don't have today networks, 5G just coming up. Uh, we don't have their networks uh, which will actually transport gigabytes of data in a separate second. That's not going to happen. So you will also see that there's a lot of decentralization happening in cloud. So we need to be really aware about that fact that yes, people are going to cloud, that you may have to put a break on the cloud and come back and think that there is a decentralization which is going to come. And that's why the technologies like 5G I talked about, more important edge computing. So you are talking about edge cloud now. So there is a master-slave relationship going to set up very soon in the whole cloud world. So we need to, I think as an enterprise uh, you know, heads, we need to really understand that what is my objective of the cloud, how my business plan is getting in line with the technology changes, and what is my ROI? Because at the end of the day, you yes, cloud is a good thing to do, but how I'm leveraging cloud for the benefit of my you know, enterprise. So work culture, your question was second was work culture. Work culture will change, obviously, when you are, this is a new way of doing business. A lot of organizations are born on cloud. Uh, so there is, they have not seen the legacy at all. So they don't know what a hybrid cloud means. Right. They know multi-cloud, they don't know hybrid cloud. So they don't know what an on-prem means. So I think those, you will see a lot more uh, companies going in that direction. Uh, so people will know that on the go is the way to go. So people will be always, uh, you know, expecting that the, uh, I know the, there is a platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, software as a service, it is going to be available. So that is the work culture, you'll see it. Okay. It's like if you ask someone that, have you seen the fax machine? You know, they'll say, what are you talking about? Why didn't you use a phone? But they never realized that before there was nothing like phone camera to uh, send the documents across. It's the same thing will happen very soon when people will realize that there's only cloud. There, why, why were people do, using on-prem and putting so much money in the capex of the servers? That question will come very soon and it will be very hard for us to explain to them what we went through. I think that is one part of it. Economy is, I would say, this is, uh, this is uh, opening up a lot of streams for the business. A lot of new companies, gig companies are coming into the picture. And what, what uh, businesses we never thought about are actually today coming to the shape. So it is going to uh, you know, not only enabler for us, as I said, that it is going to be a differentiator for us. And it is going to continue. So that, that is like the how and why of it. But I'm saying, can we do it? Do we have the tools? Like, do we have the tools at the user level, at the company level? And main thing is, you know, we don't have many hyperscale data centers. Like, if you look at the top 10 list, even Japan and all is ahead of. We are nowhere. And you require that because of the tremendous amount of data. And also, you need, uh, you know, to store your data geographically. That's a big issue. So I think we are really lagging in data centers, one, and what are the other tools? at all three levels. See, I think <clears throat> in terms of tools, yes, uh, uh, a lot of tools uh, are there, uh, you know, right now. And, uh, and those are there at uh, each level which are available. I think, uh, you know, just not tools, I think uh, the skill set in order to use those uh, tool set is, is slowly, uh, you know, developing. It's, it's there in our country, but uh, uh, people are still trying to get used to those, uh, you know, tools. For example, the example that I gave was, for example, Kubernetes. And now they are talk about DevSoc uh, ops also. And, uh, they were earlier ta talking about uh, uh, DevOps culture. Now it is all about DevSec ops. So security is also, you know, another uh, aspect which has uh, 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 come in. And there lies a lot of dearth in the, uh, or at least some dearth in the, in the skill set. Of the of the developers, uh, in order to use those tools, um, uh, so tools per se, yes, there are you know companies outside 
uh, which are which are providing those uh, you know those tools but slowly uh, for a business specific for for example maybe for power industry for example has there been such kind of a tool set available i would say it's still a long way to go you know in, in terms of cloud so maybe for for a particular domain specific and a, a, a kind of an industry specific uh, there is still a, a way uh, you know which which or there's a lot of uh, grounds that needs to be covered um, uh, so the two two points right one is the skill set of the developers and the other is uh, uh, tools also how do you use them Uh, uh so a lot of uh, training which is required uh, uh you know in order to th uh, uh, to use it and here in lies you know one of the things that we are trying which is a kind of a shift left approach you know what a shift left is earlier or in the traditional uh, deployments that we see in the uh, development communities like you know you develop you test you know you do all the audit then you do deployments then you do the production right which are moving towards your Uh, uh uh you know your your right approach you you know from left to right uh now more and more it's all about shift left you know so if you are thinking about cloud native you have to start thinking right you know at the front it's not as if once you have deployed once you have developed now you are thinking about okay now i have to de deploy this on cloud right so it has to be on day one you know which uh, which i uh, which i said earlier kind of a cloud first approach and i think which uh, you know he also mentioned that uh you know it has to be you have to think about uh, you have to be in that shoes that okay uh, why do you even need on prem right i mean so so that approach will uh, definitely come uh, yes there is dearth right now but i think it's slowly catching up it's not as if that we, you know we are uh, we are really way behind the uh, in the industry the uh, uh, the skill set uh, you know that's there because the uh, if if you look at the um uh, the salaries which have increased suddenly right and there is a dearth and so the talent uh, for this particular niche area it's very it has become very difficult to find also so that is one of the i would say at least we are facing that challenge and I, even in this uh, power industry that how do you find that talent who can who can take you through this journey right so uh, it's and it's a journey which the entire entire team has to take it is not a simple an application one particular domain entire team has to go through that journey right so you know that's yeah i mean th those are uh, couple of points okay uh, this is uh, sunil uh, you talked about uh, you know the whether we have the data centers whether that infrastructure is available and uh, what are the monitoring tools and other things we need see today i don't think there's an issue of availability of a data center i don't think that's the because you have got so many players in the market you know you have amazons of the world you have microsofts of the world googles of the world and many more so they can give you it's on demand it's as a service i, I think that's that assuming that is it is maturing it's not a big issue right now so the issue is now is that what are the kind of tools which you need as an enterprise for example if your focus is on the automation how much you can automate and when you are talking about automation you are talking about the workflow automation you are talking about the business automation it's not only running your workloads efficiently it's also triggering the right alerts to your business if something is failing how can i manage the disruption management automatically through cloud i think do have those kind of tools from the automation point of view now if you look at if the second aspect which is very important i think gotham talked about is about security so when you are pushing your data to the cloud i think if it if it is a regulated industry like airlines or even the financial industry we are talking about so you need to understand that what is the data strategy what is the data access management what is the data governance around that i think that is very important and you need tools for that so if there is a user which gets onboarded who has access to the data and if the guy has left whether the access is getting revoked automatically or not and there are a lot of tools today which will make sure that that auto sync is happening so that is the second aspect that if there is a access management and second is the access to the data itself because th these uh, cloud providers will give you a lot of native apis to access the data but is those apis open ended somebody else can use the user id passwords and get the data also you that there, there's a potential risk so while they can give you a platform but it's very important for the enterprises to get into the details what does it mean to me from the security point of view i think those that is the second aspect which we need to really understand third aspect is about the usage of cloud 
See, cloud is limitless, endless resource. It's really cloud. <laughs> so, yeah. so how, how do I use this cloud efficiently? How do I use from cost perspective? I think it is very important to have the monitoring tools for the cloud. So you don't want to get surprised at the end of the month when you are getting a bill on the table saying that, you know what, oh, you use 10 servers, you use this compute, you use storage, while as you thought that I have used this service only for two days, while the bill is coming for 30 days. So if you don't have that visibility, if you don't have that dashboard, there is no way on earth that you will find out that what, how I'm using the cloud. So the monitoring from the cost perspective, monitoring from the operations perspective, if the server is going down, you need to have that red alert and those tools should be able to make sure that the alerts are coming real time and you can monitor the business far, far better. And if uh, what Gautam talked about was on the developer, developer side, if you are using cloud for your whole developer community, if you are, for example, an IT company, completely IT company, so they, are, they will use cloud mostly for their DevOps, DevSecOps, whatever that is. So the licensing for that, unused licenses, used licenses, and availability of that itself is a separate usage where you can use uh, cloud efficiently. And there are, again, tools for making sure that your uh, you know, compilation, your release management, configuration management, all the tools which are typically associated with host SDLC lifecycle. So those can be part of it. So the more slices you go do for the cloud, the, you, know, you will get one more lens to look at. So you need to find out what your lens is. Otherwise, you can get lost by the too many offerings, too many solutions offered by these cloud partners. So very important is that what is my cloud story? What is my cloud plan? I think very important for us. And how do I monitor this? How do I manage it? And people say that you know, cloud can save a lot of cost. If it is not done well, actually, you may be ending spending more. And you may be ending exposing your data more to the vulnerabilities which are outside. So you need to judicially take, judiciously take that call and make sure that whatever you have got is relevant for you, it makes sense to you. So uh, that's one, but one I've seen as you talk, one thing which keeps recurring is security, you know, data, privacy, security. Now why I'm very interested that both of you are here, you represent two industries or airlines I never thought would be on the cloud, power and airlines. Like 96 I'll go and you know, he used to do that, give me a physical ticket. But uh, now, say you look at airlines, you're you know, doing it on the mobile, then algorithm is deciding how much I pay. And AI is even flying, max, the controversy. You have pilotless planes. Similarly, power. Power, when I used to pay the bill, it's just one, you know, and, but that is also now digital infrastructure. Hacking is happening, ransomware attacks is happening. So I mean, I never thought these two things would be. So it is very important. So maybe if you can speak from that point of view. I think uh, security definitely is one of the key areas that uh, every industry is thinking about, not just airlines, not just, uh, you know, power industry. And, uh, uh, you know, I think uh, there are no dearth of uh, tools available in order to, uh, in order to uh, you know, stop the attacks or in order to be vigilant. I think what's missing is the kind of governance that is required and the kind of, uh, uh, you know, monitoring which is required in order to make sure that uh, uh, you know security breaches are you know least and there are several aspects to it right one of the things is that now once you go cloud native you are more and more or as as a company we are more and more dependent amount how secure is your vendor right and uh, are we getting a uh, you know update from in the kind of security patches that needs to be updated are they doing it on time or not right I mean, simple, for example, I think last year, maybe I think it was in 2019, where uh, SolarWind, which is one of the most, uh, uh, one of the most widely used uh, tool also, which was hacked. And suddenly, you know, the, the patch was already available, uh, you know, for, th for, the, for the entire, uh, you know, to use. They did not, it was a very simple thing where their password was, uh, you know, a very yes. simple password which they were using. Correct. And uh, that's one of the... is happening the uh, the top osp those guidelines are already available but part in the kind of strict adherence to those uh, principles uh, which are needed that when you need to do the patch update you have to do it you know there is no yes and has such a such a big dependency of infrastructure it becomes very difficult
so how do you think of when you deploy it you have to think about it right so data so this governance i think has become very very critical you identify your assets uh, you know what are your critical assets and those again that framework has been you know set the nist there are so many cyber security frameworks which are there the government india is uh, the government of india is uh, you know pushing for it if you look at the recent uh, guidelines authority in the in the in the pod even they have come up with cyber security guidelines long back uh, you know raise and one if has to go through those guidelines and whatever they are proposing if one is really implementing it uh, yes the probability will be less you know will it be uh, 100% not there i mean there is uh, there, there is no guarantee because uh, you know cyber security is such a if, uh, it's it's evolving Uh, you know every day but a lot of thing for me i think what is missing is that uh, governance part the governance structure and strictly you know adhering uh, to it and there are so many tools as you know mr vinod mentioned right now the problem is not about lack of tools it's about choosing the the the, the right tool every vendor who comes on to uh, you know us uh, being a cto or be a uh, being a cio uh, they everyone has some agenda around their tools right how do you choose which one is the right for your industry for your domain for your that becomes a challenge and that's where you know expertise talent expertise within the team and uh, you know becomes really important security is no more just a compliance thing you know there were long gone were the days where uh, people companies used to have an annual audit and you know just for an uh, for an audit perspective you had to go through a kind of a uh, you know uh, kind of a drill uh but here you have to do it monthly you have to do it quarterly you you cannot avoid it uh, the kind of penetration testing which are required all those tools are available you just have to implement them correctly and then uh, you know make sure that we are uh, monitoring you know all those aspects um so yes i think uh, you know from a security point of view i think uh, being uh, cyber uh, sorry i mean cloud native once you go cl cloud native security will play a role and i think in the earlier discussion there was a lot of i think the the one before that right. the bill you know that uh, uh, is 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 going to be uh, tabled up that would just uh, i think accelerate uh, you know this uh, journey uh, you know forward see uh, <clears throat> security again uh, see last 2 3 years have been very different for almost all the organizations so so much of data getting generated because people are moving from offline to online and uh, there is lot more risk exposure from the security point of view and you put on top of it you put the cloud journey so organizations are moving their data to the cloud or moving the apps to the cloud data to the cloud then there is lot of data getting generated outside so that's also going there so you kind of have exposed yourself a lot more than ever from the security point of view so you need to understand first of all do you have the right security policy for the organization because if you don't have the sop if you don't have the policy in place i think you can't govern it you absolutely can't govern it so first thing is that we need to understand that there has to be a security policy in place second is what's my risk exposure from the uh, uh, no but touch points perspective whether it is from the edge point of view devices websites whatever you have got i think we need to understand that better third is what are the controls in place do i have control see there is no silver bullet to you know mitigate security risk absolutely not what is there in your hand is there has to be a better strategy to isolate those incidents quickly and recover from that quickly so i think there is where that whole architecture of security architecture plays a big role uh the controls play a big role and the real time information connecting those dots we talk about sim right siem where you really the event management which happens if there is a violation how can you quickly connect the dots and give the alerts and so that you can address the traffic whether it is a cyber attack or any other attack that can be addressed as soon as possible that is on one part of the story second part of the story is that your networks which have actually pose a lot more uh, risk to your organization that typically we are still a lot of organization are centric towards ip ip centric securities but what or what the industry is moving towards is role based security uh, because if you have a legitimate login legitimate computer it doesn't mean that you can access any application on the network i think we are going towards that that uh, you know security framework which uh, where you really 
uh, tie uh, the, your role with your access. And more importantly, the whole network operating uh, operation center and the security operation cent center, they don't converge. So if, if I have to see that which network is down and what security has brought it down. So you need to look at it from that perspective also when you are looking at the security for the organization. And also, uh, you know, the policy, when, you, when we design the policies, it is again specific to your organization, how much exposure you have got. And also, if you are a regulated industry, you will have a lot more data privacy related issues where you can, you have liabilities to your, uh, you know, for the organization and you need to make sure that you are compliant because you will get audited and you will make sure that you have got the right controls from the data security point of view, from the information security point of view, from the cyber security point of view. So I think it is a big, uh, I would say, area of focus for the CIO, CTO, CXOs and it is no more a CTO agenda, it is a board level agenda. I think everyone has their work cut out. I think we have covered a lot of ground. Final question before going, maybe in two minutes each, what is that one technology that is going to take us to a cloud nation? You can just say that in two minutes. I think, uh, I doubt it's one technology, you know, as I said, of yeah, see, as I said, you know, uh, earlier also, uh, being cloud native is, is like talking about four different layers, right? Cloud native means uh, we are talking about cloud infrastructure, AWS, GCPs of the world. And then with, we, then we are talking about orchestration on top of that, container orchestration. So there are tools, you know, Kubernetes, I think I gave, yeah, you yeah. know, one example, yeah. which is, uh, which is really, uh, you know, coming up. And then containers, right, uh, dockers and, you know, et cetera, those are there. And then in, in the application, but more than that, you know, all these uh, tools already exist. I think what uh, Mr. Vinod also rightly pointed out, the monitoring aspect on the cloud native, how do you really monitor your uh, cloud resources? Are they getting utilized? Are they, uh, you know, once you are in data center, you really don't care if you, if you have 10 instances. I mean, you do, but when you, you care when there is a budget, et cetera, which is coming up. But uh, uh, here, I mean, uh, on cloud, it really impacts your uh, revenue, you know, right uh, uh, there. Uh, not revenue, but your, you know, operating uh, cost. So uh, those uh, monitoring tools, I believe those are, even from a security point of view, whether it is a SOC that you need to be set up or SAIM tools that need to be SOC up, uh, you know, set up, uh, those monitoring tools are very, very important as we move uh, towards the, uh, you know, cloud native words. And uh, the world is, I would say, more moving towards, uh, in the cloud native, towards zero trust. You know, it's no more an IP-based, trust that you are doing. It is a zero trust word. You are, the first request that you get, uh, it has to be authentic, uh, you know, from wherever you get it, right? So uh, here again, uh, you know, there are tools available in order to do that. So I would say there is no single tool, unfortunately right. I can't, sure, sure, sure. but it's uh, really a bouquet of tools uh, which has to be used correctly. And uh, finally, your the, uh, within the organization, the kind of skill set, uh, you know, that you have, that has to be really uplifted uh, uh, from two grounds. One is on the cloud native in order to understand what are, gonna, what are the kind of solutions which are there and then also from the security perspective, right? And then lastly, the governance part where all these tools and, you know, the, uh, the entire skill set, etc. they all finally, the kind of governance which is there in the company which is set up, I think that also plays a very, uh, you know, big role. Yeah, uh, I will answer this uh, from two dimensions. Okay. One is, imagine on the line and above the line theory. On the line is when you have got all the infrastructure in place, so it will come. So all the infrastructure, when I say that, the compute power, storage power, network power, it will come. That's on the line. And also the, you know, the cost will come down. So that will, it will keep you in the fray. You are a cloud native adopter. You are a cloud, you are on the cloud journey, that's all. But if here there is one technology which is going to differentiate you, that will be artificial intelligence. Okay. AI will be one technology on cloud which will actually take you miles ahead. Okay. And it will differentiate you from the business point of view and it will open up your eyes that what more you can do, do with AI. Your own data will speak, you will give life to your data. Data is lifeless today. People say data is new oil, but I'm saying data is lifeless. Give life to data. The only it can happen is that if you have AI engines built. So we should definitely spend our money on the data analysts, data scientists,
who can actually carve out what we are doing in the business and more importantly what more we can do. Right. So that will give you a competitive advantage, that will give you your, you know, the proactive business decisioning, predictive modeling, all that will be part of it. That's how I'll answer it. Anyway, thank you for that very engrossing talk. I mean, we already have one foot in the cloud, soon both feet are going to be in the cloud. It's very important. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sunil, for having us. Thank you, Sunil, sir, for the session. May I request you to hand over the mementos to our panelists?